Hey everyone, Aaron Davis from FCP Euro, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your rear brakes on your Audi S3. Now behind me I have a 2016 Audi S3, but it's the same steps for an Audi A3 or the Audi TT and MQB chassis. In front of me I have Zimmerman Sport cross-drilled rotors and Ate ceramic brake pads. What's nice about the Zimmerman cross-drilled rotors is that they're actually coated to help prevent corrosion. And also the cross-drilled actually allows heat to escape to allow the rotor to stay cool. For the ceramic brake pads, they're made out of ceramic mix and copper fibers. And this allows for a better pedal feel, also takes up more heat, and you will have less noise and brake dust on your wheels. So now let's look at the tools you're gonna need to complete this job. So the tools you're gonna need to do this rear brake job is a half inch ratchet, torque wrenches, pry bar, a wire brush, a quarter inch ratchet, 17 millimeter, M14 triple square, a T30, a seven millimeter Allen, a caliper holder bracket, 90 degree hook pick, a flathead, and a 22 millimeter wrench. If you're gonna actually use the special tool to close the caliper, you'll need that 22 millimeter wrench to actually use that. Um, you also will need a hammer. You do not need uh, impact guns, but it is nice to have, it makes the job a lot easier. And if your car is equipped with electronic parking brake, you are gonna need a scanner to do so. You can either get a VACOM or also known as Rostec here, or if you have an Autel scan tool, that will also close the piston for you. The special caliper tool that spins the caliper in, you will need if you do not have electronic parking brake for your vehicle. So let's go replace the rear brakes on this Audi S3. So the first steps in replacing rear brakes on the Audi S3 um, is you have to verify that your vehicle has either electronic parking brake or if it actually has the handle for the parking brake. If your vehicle does have the electronic parking brake, you will have to open it with a scanner. The scanner I'm using today is Rostec, also known as Vacom. But if you have an Autel at home, we do have a video on how to replace the rear brakes electronically through the Audi BAS4 rear brake video. So I have my Rostec plugged in. I'm gonna turn the ignition on, I'm gonna open Rostec up. So now that Rostec is open, you're gonna to go to channel three, ABS brakes. You're gonna to go to basic settings, channel four. And then in this drop down menu, it's called start lining change mode to open up the caliper pistons. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna hit go. You're gonna get the fault on the dash that the parking brake is open. You're gonna hear manually open, and that's how you know they're open when Rostec says it's finished correctly and it's not running anymore. So now that the calipers are fully open, I'm gonna get out of the vehicle. I'm gonna show you how to replace your rear brakes. So now that the rear caliper is open electronically, we're gonna go ahead and remove the wheel. First thing you wanna do is take the lug cap off. I use a 90 degree hook pick, loop it through the hole, give it a tug. Now I'm gonna take a 17 millimeter socket and remove the five 17 millimeters. So now that the rear wheel is off, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver, move the anti-rattle clip, just pry on the inside right here, like that, and just pull it out. All right, so now we're gonna remove the caliper. You have to remove these rubber caps. They are covering the bolt hole, and there's two caps, one for the top and one for the bottom and put these aside. They're important to make sure no dirt and debris get in there. So now we're gonna go ahead, use a seven millimeter Allen. Now, before I fully remove this bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the top one. You're gonna need a stubby seven millimeter Allen because this brake line is in the way of you fitting a regular seven millimeter Allen in here. And now I can fully take out the bottom. Now the bolts are out, we can go ahead and remove the caliper. So I can go ahead and slide the inner brake pad out and also just press the outer brake pad out. So now the caliper's off, we're gonna take the caliper carrier off. There are two M14 triple squares.
now we can slide the carrier out. So now the caliper, the caliper carrier are off. I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter lug, twist it in a couple times. Now I'm gonna take the T30 off. Now I'm gonna take a hammer. I'm gonna hit the hat of it to shock the rotor off. I'm gonna hit right here on the hat. And what, basically what that does is it's gonna shock this rotor right off the rust. So I hit the top hat with the hammer. It's not coming off. Since I'm not reusing the rotor, you can go ahead and hit the face of it because we are gonna put new rotors on and you're gonna really wanna swing and put some force on this. And as you can see, there's a ton of rust on this brake rotor, which is a good indication of why we actually couldn't get this off. And you can actually see the glazing on this rotor and see the lines. It was definitely time to replace the rear brakes on this vehicle. So now the brake rotors are moved. I'm gonna go ahead and take my wire brush. Just gonna clean up all of this rust and debris. Now I'm gonna hit it with the brake clean. So before we put the new rotor on and the caliper and the caliper carrier, um, we did open up the piston for the caliper electronically. Um, however, on some cars that don't have the electronic e-brake, you actually have to twist the piston in. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. What I have right here is the Astro 78618. This is the special tool to actually twist your piston in. So it comes with this bracket and a whole bunch of adapters. So for the bracket, you're gonna slide it through this T like this. And since the box is full of adapters, you have to find the adapter that fits well on the caliper itself. As you can see, on the caliper, there's two dowels right here, and that's where these two pins will sit when you go to twist the caliper. In. So, I'm gonna go ahead, install the adapter. I'm gonna push this backing plate here and just basically slide it in and back this nut up right here to fully tighten it. And actually on this one, since you don't necessarily have to twist it in like the manual ones, when I'm backing it in like this, it actually is pushing the piston in. However, if you do have to actually rotate the piston, once this is fully tight right here, you just rotate clockwise like this, like this, and it will actually twist your piston in. So now that the piston is fully collapsed, I'm gonna go ahead and put anti-seize on the hub. So now the anti-seize is on the hub, we're gonna go ahead and slide the new rotor on. You're gonna line up this hole where the T30 goes. Always put it in by hand. They're very easy to strip. Now I'm gonna take the T30 and lightly zap it in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean the caliper carrier. You wanna get all this dirt and debris out, otherwise the new brake pads will squeak. So now I hit the brake caliper carrier with the wire brush. I'm gonna take a little brake clean. Now we're gonna slide the brake caliper carrier back in. We're gonna install the M14 triple squares in by hand. and torque the caliper carrier bolts to 90 newton meters. All right, so now we're gonna install the inner pad. We're gonna take our Ate anti-squeal paste, put it on the ears of the brake pad. The inner brake pad has that spring. So that's how you know it's the inner one. So go ahead and move the caliper out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and slide that in. And now we're gonna install the outer brake pad. Same thing, anti-squeal paste on here on the ears of the brake pad. Go ahead and rub it in the ear. And notice how the outer pad does not have the spring. That's how you know it goes on the outside. We're gonna slide that right into the caliper carrier. So now the brake pads 
our slid into the carrier, we're going to go ahead and install the caliper again. Go ahead and slide it over. Push the bolts in place. So now the caliper is in place, we're going to go ahead and start tightening the seven millimeter Allens. So now we're going to go ahead and torque the caliper, seven millimeter Allens to the 35 newton meters. Now we're going to go ahead and put the caps back on. So now that the caliper is on, we're gonna go ahead and install the anti-rattle clip. So this can be a little tricky, so take your time because while you're trying to install it, it is kind of spring-loaded and it can shoot. You're gonna to wanna to take this pin, slide it in the hole, and then this has to be on the outside of the caliper. You're gonna go ahead and push this one into the hole, take it with your hand, press it in like that, and I like to just give it a little tap. So now that the rear brakes are fully installed, we're gonna go ahead and install our wheel. So now we're gonna to torque the five 17 millimeter lugs to 120 Newton meters. Now that we went and replaced the rear brakes on this Audi S3, I'm gonna show you how to close the caliper piston using VACOM. So the first thing we wanna do is turn the ignition on. You're gonna to go to select control module. You're gonna to go to channel three ABS brakes. You're gonna hit basic settings. In the drop down box, you're gonna hit end lining change mode and then hit go. And you're gonna hear the motors running and basically what that's doing is learning the adaption of the caliper and how far it actually has to be pushed out since you added new brake pads. So Rostec says it finished and this is not running. That means the test plan is not running anymore. So now you can hit stop, done. So now that the caliper is closed, it's good practice that you always hit the brake pedal a couple times before you turn the vehicle on because you don't want to hit the gas pedal, hit the brakes. Uh, you're not going to have brakes for the first couple of times. So I'm just going to hit the brake pedal a couple of times. The brake pedal feels stiff, and that means it's okay for me to turn the car on and then go for a test drive. I hope that you found this video useful. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward job. Um, if your vehicle does have the electronic parking brake, you will need a scan tool to do it. If it does not, you can also use that special tool that I showed you how to do it. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. And as always, I'll see you soon.